Hello everyone, welcome to this month's Brush Sauce uh, Challenge. It was, uh, I'm here with uh, a guest, Derek Wesolek. Hey guys. Was, yeah, say hello. Uh, and we were on, he came on the previous episode and we yeah, kind of just talked some stuff and came up with some concepts. So we just, uh, the challenge this month was uh, to design a rubble base. So we'll be looking kind of at a, a lot of the craftsmanship involved in that and how basically what the, the most important thing we'll be looking for is how clearly uh, your design uh, kind of comes across and we'll go from top to bottom so in case you need to skip ahead to yours and we're going to try to keep them all as short as possible to kind of keep things rolling and in a certain flow so we'll start with matt p here and i'll blow these up so we just focus on this one as requested in one of my last comments so yeah here we go i i let me see all right matt i think this is an awesome idea you clearly know what you're doing you have everything articulately laid out you even break down some textures and you have you basically have the outside design and an interior design, like a full, like, what do they call this, like a cutaway? You got a full cutaway on there. It's, I mean, it's a little low res on my screen, but that's really well thought out. And that's exactly what we're looking for here because your um, your idea is very clear. And you even have like a mood or like an action concept painting for it too. Uh, what do you think about this, Derek? Oh, I love the passion in it, first of all. Like you could see you really put a lot of love and effort into this by having the, the whole cutout and right up on it yeah. and it really does make sense as a, a rebel base it's you know a hidden mountainside and mm -hmm. you builds in and the arc is a really nice touch to it you know it's a bit of you know it's not so it's, yeah it adds some yeah. personality to it and it makes it distinguishable um i yeah, like I, I just overall you have a really kind of professional presentation with it and i think that's great um now if you wanted to improve um, I think just kind of controlling a little bit more of your your uh, edges and your um, how you maybe you like render some of these forms. This at at least this resolution gets a little muddied out where you may want to just go and accent certain edges with like you know to make sure the light in the form is clearly reading and we we know what's coming in and what's going out. But that's really like my only kind of serious critique for this. I mean, because it's just so well designed. I mean, I wish I could just see something like this a bit better. But you know, overall, it's very uh, very well done um this you might want to control your values a bit more um if i just squinted that it all kind of gets washed out into this kind of mid-range stuff i mean it's good that you have like a little contrast here but just watch the value control and, and try to group them a little bit uh, uh stronger next time but overall really great job yeah definitely just the brush control i'd say is a uh, major mm -hmm. thing to to work on just uh have some really sharp uh, edges and areas that you want people to look at and, you know, to cut off some certain parts to frame it out better and go from there. All right, yeah, ne next we've got uh, Adrian here. So let me see. I kind of combined it your two. So here we have the outside and then we have an inside shot. So that's always good. Um, I like I like your idea here. You're, you're showing a lot. Um, like, you have, like, this whole civilization back here. It, it appears so. Um, and then, like, so maybe, like, Rebels escaping a monster. But, th see, now, um, you may have noticed I'm, I'm slowing down because things aren't as clear as I may want them to be because I'm, like, I'm starting to second-guess what I'm saying even or how I'm perceiving this. Like, is this is this a creature or is this, like, some structure that's shaped like a creature? Um, is it shooting missiles out of its eyes or is these, like, blowing up the monster? But, see, uh, like, in terms of, like, a Rebel to vase, uh, vase, that's where... I don't know about you, Derek, but I'm getting a little bit confusion in, in regards to that. Yeah. I'd say um, I'm yeah I'm wondering if it, um, because I noticed the background um, is is blurred out, so I'm wondering if the background is the is a rebel base or if the monster is like a cave base. Yeah. I was wondering, so I would say just clarify that more, and uh, in terms of composition, maybe layer stuff more or have the have stuff just seem as right now it, it flattens out by having um. The, the creature mm -hmm. slash and the um, ship on the same flat plane by and then having just that in the background. If you were to move the monster a bit closer to the screen and then yeah, maybe the sharpen the up the structure in the background, then that would be pretty nice. Yeah, I agree. And I, I love the I do love the character designs though. You have some a lot of personality in them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, the I do like this inside. <laughs> I do like this inside shot a lot. Though what we're seeing here is um, like inconsistency with the perspective. 
that's that's kind of suspect so uh, before you kind of jump into things here you have ideas and they're awesome uh, but before you kind of commit to like these all these full kind of paintings just spend extra time kind of just plotting out your images and you know drawing laying out perspective grids so what I'm just you know to simplify what I'm saying is just kind of work on the drawing aspect and then you can kind of go from color and the value from there but you know overall really really awesome effort and that's certainly something to be commended uh, on this yeah, and if you ever want a, a good way to work out perspective with your characters, then it just put a box around them first. Like if you re learn really simple perspective, and then just put a, a box where you want each character to be, and then build them into it. Yeah, uh, absolutely correct. Uh, all right, Gabriel, I think this is one of this is an awesome idea. Like everything about this, <laughs> crazy. right? Everything about this screams rebel base. Everything is makeshift, run down, kind of like haphazard and worn and you know built from you know remodeled things like this is very rebelish and i like that because it's partially hidden you've got a not so obvious uh an antenna array up top with it complete with its artillery guns you really <laughs> thought a lot about this and I, I like that what do you think derek yeah yeah if um if like the only thing you need to work on is uh perspective and have been you know feel more like you're there and that but yeah the idea is awesome it's almost like you really you built the real base and then you really wanted to defend it well it's yeah yeah like there, <laughs> see the there, there's, a, there's lot, a lot to look at i like yeah that. but there's a lot of techniques and there's a lot going on here some of this is outright just drawn with pencil some of it's photo bashed you got some things that are painted but it's like before you get into all that because um, you have the idea, but let's work on articulate. You know, we want to execute the idea well, and for you to do that, I think better. Yeah. Again, go back to the drawing. A, um, a bad drawing is always going to make a bad painting. So don't jump into the painting quite so fast, and really work on you know mapping out on a, a you know the horizon line, what kind of perspective you're going to be using, and just keep things consistent across the board. I think is the most important thing for you. Just because you know we have clear things that are detailed and photoed, um, other things that are just you know painted over, and then things are just outright drawn. So we want to make everything kind of want to you want to ultimately look at one co cohesive piece that's also kind of um, uh, correct in terms of its spatial awareness and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's definitely one yeah, of exactly. my exactly yeah favorite ideas up here. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Tyler earlier that saying that once you once you do nail perspective and being able to mm -hmm. make it more adhesive and connected together with your brush strokes then and you go back to your old ideas you're going to be insanely good yes sometimes coming up with the idea is the hardest part but you really nailed that actually i didn't see the the name on this one oh aviv sorry i i'm going to pronounce everybody's names wrong i like your approach this <laughs> very Ill a very illustrative you know approach to problem solving you know or approaching this this month's challenge which was certainly concept based but you found a way to illustrate it which is I, that is awesome and yours tells a story and it's very kind of clear and I like that yeah I like the whimsical nature of it I work in worked in animation myself as a concept artist so it's definitely in that kind of line that you would use for a color script and I love the the, the the giraffe that has seen some shit there on the left. <laughs> he's got those like those eyes, man. He's just he's yeah. been in the trenches, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's been able to peek his heads out and he's see been, see it. He <laughs> has been cattle prod. Oh, I like you got a leader here. You got like this little cat. Yeah, lots of good storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna murk the bird. This fish is even checking things out. Um, you got a lot. Of your ideas here. Um, and it's pretty well articulated. And now, if if you wanted to improve it, what I I'd continue to do is kind of work on work on color. You can add some accents, maybe like from a red light that's out of camera, giving everything a nice kind of like a little bit of a red or a warmer glow from behind them. And then you could have like either put like a cooler light uh, like coming off this, and then you know you work on the yeah. cast shadows. Keep going with that sort of thing. And then, you know, the room itself is just very, very boxy. So if you wanted to add more design to something like the floor, adding the tiles in, adding pipes or wear and tear to the walls, that sort of thing will go a long way um, to supplementing your idea. Yeah, I completely agree with Tyler um, in terms of color. And that um, I had a talk with uh, DreamWorks before, and what they do is they put everything into hot and cool. So no matter what colors they are, put it between mm -hmm. hot and cool if you're going to do something uh, cartoony like this and that'll really make things pop as uh, Tyler brought up. Yeah, you, you only have to ask yourself that one question or well, two questions. Is it is it well, one question. Is it hot or is it cold? And that can just start, the, you know, that conversation with yourself design-wise in terms of what you want to approach. 
Yeah, even if it's two um, two very cold colors, always one is more warm. So and kind of that the question that goes with that is what is what is in light and what is in shadow. Yeah, those two kind of core questions you want to keep in mind when you're designing a scene like that. All right, Austin, uh, glad to see you kind of participating in this again. And this is a, I was, I was telling Derek, this is a dreadfully ad from ad, atmospheric scene. Like th this is a world you've kind of depicted that is in certain need of rebels to come liberated <laughs> from this evil evilness that's going on. You got like a, there's a lot going on here. You got like this cool fortress in here. I don't know if that's the rebel base though, per se, cause it, I don't know, it's so obvious. I don't, and, or maybe it's like a giant, I don't know, maybe it's, like a, there's a lot of ways you can interpret this. It's almost like, um, what's that, um, Yoshitaka feeling to it? Yeah. Where it's, uh, Final Fantasy kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yoshitaka Mano. Yeah, that's, that's I love the mood of it, yeah. But, um. It's, um, but what I, yeah, if you're gonna do for a design thing, yeah, maybe, if you want to keep the mood of One Piece for Constant Start, sometimes, um, it's good to have a good, uh. You know, on the side, maybe draw yeah. out the structures completely. Yeah, or you know, you come up with a yeah. quick painting like this, then lay like a blank layer over it, and I can just kind of show you like this because I, I don't actually have my tablet hooked in, so I can't do any kind of quick fancy notes because I'm doing everything here with a mouse. What you do is you put your virtual piece of tracing paper over it, right, and then you can make a new layer above that, and then you can get your little brush tool. Yeah. I just noticed there's a face in the chest of there now with the gray on it. It's Wait, like a grin face. Right here? <laughs> in the middle, no, a little lower. Oh, I didn't notice <laughs> that. It's just terrifying. Yeah. You know what? You, you put your virtual tracing paper over it, though, and then you, you do a much better job than what I'm doing here, and you, you draw everything really articulately so your design is clearly presented because I just – there's too much getting lost in a lot of this, which kind of comes back to is you know, really – really get down your edge control and when you have your edge control you can clearly illuminate and illustrate or even design the forms of these so everything's really kind of it reads clearly that's what you want to go for texture is awesome too but not at the expense of readability but that'll be like the lesson learned there yeah i agree completely on that just work on readability and duddle duddle dawn Awesome. You you were working hard on this. I saw you posting it a few times. So let's check out where we ended up. Five years after the invasion, we have an underground shelter, the base of operations. And see, there's a little hatch, and we got inside the hatch. So I like the continuity with that. Awesome job, dude. Derek, what do you think about this? I'd say, um, yeah, I like the, the idea and mood of it. I'd say just uh, clean it up. Make sure um, to start with... Um, bigger strokes and don't go into the tiny little thing like, like, don't zoom in and do tiny little strokes or anything mm -hmm. just try like uh try to make sure it just reads well with I, your, yeah and strokes. i actually like this bot i think this bottom one is actually much stronger than the top yeah it has a stronger it just, it, repeat, yeah, yeah d don't it's worry so much about color especially if you're earlier on in your artistic journey just really do value scenes until they read in like a really kind of simple and badass way do you mean does it look cool do you, can you look at it without really needing to interpret things um, and then, you know, once you really get the hang of doing scenes just in value, when you jump to color, you'll, you, I think it'll just be much more natural for you and you, you'll have a stronger sense of the color, even though you may have not tried them for a while, but you'll, you'll know whether or not something is too bright or too dark. Uh, you'll yeah. just, it's just a, a natural way to uh, kind of approach that. Just, and, uh, uh, you could always put a grayscale on top of your color once you do that or, um, mm -hmm. blur your eyes and see if it still reads really well for you. But I like this. You you've thought yeah, things yeah. through. You got you know the the harshness of the cave wall kind of like dug or chiseled out. You have the pipes. You know the the support structures. You have wires. You know powering this place up. You've got you know gear and barracks. Well thought out, yeah. <laughs> you thought it through, and that's what's most important. Your idea is cl so you know you mission success in terms of in, in regards to that because your idea is very clearly presented. Um, when you you obviously probably just want to work on you know finessing and your painting in general. Um, to things just like, you know, get way too busy and jittery where, you know, just work in plain silhouettes and block out shapes and value if you're going to kind of approach painting in a, in a sense. I do like the background or the background buildings in the top one. Though. That's a nice, uh, mm. really definitely get, yeah, it sets the, the tone. Uh Oh, we got, uh, Frederick here with Roman separatists. This is going to get real. All right, what do we got here? A 
look at this. This is cool. Senatus Populus Romanus. Yeah. He's got rockets rocket? in Athens. <laughs> Rocketry base, dude. This is badass. See, I like this guy. He is thinking outside the box. Look at That's this. a sweet vehicle, by the way. I like that. That's a chariot jeep there. <laughs> dude, he's got it all. He's got these, like, rebel dudes, like the elite legionaries. Keep going with this idea, and as you work on your stuff, like, if you built, like, half a portfolio out of this concept yeah, and everything yeah, that goes with idea. it, it'll look badass. Like, you get the little ship back here. It's blasting off. No, this is awesome idea, man. This you got armor, you got you know, you, you did so you did the designs of them, the different helmets, how they work. You've got different characters to go with them. What do you have to add? Do you have, do you have anything in regards to this tower? Oh no, I completely agree with that. But yeah, I love the uh, it reads really well in uh, the top down um, uh, shot of it. If anything, I guess just uh, maybe since the rocket is your main selling point, um, maybe. Put more thought or detail into the rocket. Yeah. Other than that, of it. Like this, this scene reads a lot more clearly to me. Maybe because it's in value, but this is just like light versus dark, light versus dark, light versus dark, um, and then maybe even some of the perspectives a little questionable. So again, you know, just work on you know maybe slow down a bit, take your time, really articulate how you want to lay out the scene, where you want to put cast shadows, and uh, you know what you want to do to illuminate the rocket so it's the first thing we look at. Because my eye is kind of. It's kind of looking at this, but it also really wants to look at this area too, for whatever reason. So just kind of keep that in mind, and you know, you'll you'll get better at. I mean, these characters have a certain character and personality to them, and I never wanted to say anything to to, to um to kind of detract from you kind of going on that path. But yeah, you'll get better at even you're just rendering these guys out over time, and you just you do it faster, and they'll they'll look you know they'll, you you'll have better brushwork. It was what I'm saying because you know, it's a little rougher on the edges, but you get the idea across. So obviously that's the most important thing, and that's what we're looking at. But awesome job. I like these guys a lot. They might be my favorite bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cohort. A lot of in this <laughs> yeah, he nailed it. That's such a good page. All right, I'm moving on. Hugo. Hey, yeah, Hugo's, Hugo's bringing the thunder. Okay, we have um, we'll start here. So we got like it looks like a hangar, a hidden hangar in like um, a satellite or a canyon or you know an asteroid or a canyon or something. So that's cool. It's, he's got all the ideas here. The barrel prop. That's good to have props and then wall textures and panel layouts. I like this. Yeah, it's got a strong 3D element to it. Yeah. Yeah, really, really strong. See, uh, the only I, thing is, like, everything almost kind of looks like it was. It's like that plasticky type of material. I mean, it, there's obviously the, like the specular some metal. I don't know, but some maybe like add more variety to the texture use, like which I think at this stage you could probably easily do with photo photo overlays or just some you know hand painted brushwork to add some wear and tear maybe some labels to things you know just to continue to add because the render and the layout yeah. is great but you want to add personality to it at, at this stage what do you think Derek? yeah i definitely agree with that because the rebel bases you know they're the they're the cheaper guys they, they can't they can't afford the best materials yeah, like they do usually have a lot of pride so you could sometimes you know add mm -hmm. personality on top of those crates or something like scratches maybe somebody left of you know like a a cloth on top of one or having like a you know, panel like, misplaced yeah. wires like wall panels like just like you have up here just continue this motif you know throughout you know the entire scene yeah F uh floors and walls and yeah we'll take a look at your drawings too like these drawings are, good, are pretty good as well you know much more rough um and something like this it would be obviously the focal point sticking out but it, the rest of it just gets kind of washed out into a darker value so just yeah, consider the clarity on that for you know moving in the for uh moving yeah, forward. But awesome idea though, and well presented. Yeah, I like that. There's a that, um some hanger sketches. That's always good for that. Hangers are awesome. They're a safe bet and a and a good bet. And that's good to see some three D too. Some people ask, are we allowed to do three D for this stuff? Of course you are. Who might say no? The wyvern. Yeah, it's all about the final result. Oh, the Wyvern Rider deserters. They probably stole the Emperor's Wyverns. Okay, look at that. You got <laughs> some, two clear characters, some... right? I like that. This is cool. I like the colors, yeah. It's really nice. This yeah. is like... 
this is everything I want to see in this co in this uh, challenge. You got the characters, and they're really clear. I mean, I know this is low res, you know, especially for the people viewing this on YouTube after the fact. You'd really have to blow it up, um, blow up the uh, the thing, babe. But yeah, we can see the. It's idea. cleverly hidden. It's nice. Yeah, and I like that you have the the sense of scale, uh, light and shadow. Everything's consistent and, and well articulated. So that I really do like. Awesome illustration, dude. And we get the interior. This is, I'm guessing, um, the thing you got to last, obviously. It just has the, the least amount of <laughs> um, um, uh, right rendering involved because the ideas here and the light, and it's all good. It's just like, you know, more for, you know, for next time, more thought and consideration into going into like the materials of the of the floor, how they are connected, and what kind of support beams are they? Like, you have them on the roof, but like, do, does have, is there anything on the wall? Is there different levels of trim? You know, what, what about window frames? You know, just keep, you know, put yourself in that mindset to go down that, that rabbit hole of question answering uh, in terms of like, I need to figure out every little aspect of how, you know, that wall connects to that floor, um, and so on and so forth. But, you know, you got the idea down, and I, I, I really respect that. Yeah, I agree. I'd say just, uh, and also at the top of that, maybe work on the perspective a bit. But if you find perspective to be a bit complicated for adding windows and stuff, you could always draw it flat and then just skew it to the wall after. Yeah, that looks a little inconsistent there. You're right. Uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little wonky in places. But I mean, it, it, it gets the job done. And yeah. But uh, yeah, I like your idea though. Like, no, I don't think anyone else did like this kind of Riven Rider. Like, I want to make a bunch of concepts on this because. It, it just reminds yeah, me of every nice. RPG, every old school RPG I played <laughs> in like 97 to 2000. Yeah, it's like a mix of, uh, was it like Chrono Cross mixed so with Coden like and pa Panzer Dragoon a bit yep, in there? <laughs> everything. I love it. Yeah, nice mood. All right, we're, I think we're about here. I'm trying to make my way like <laughs> across this. All right, Mike. Mike Kayser, how you doing? Oh, this is a cool entry. Like, yeah. I like the top left read sketch thing. That's yeah, too. That's a good layout, actually. Yeah, you took a lot of notes, so that's cool. You get like the whole little thing here. You're like, "Yep, we're going desert. We're gonna do good rebels," and it's very. I love the faded the faded out sketches in the back. That's such a. I'm, I'm gonna steal that idea one day. That's nice. That is cool. Nice, uh, I like it's how these are like prints. checklists. <laughs> Literally checklists. Yeah. <laughs> I've never you seen have a that very before. good uh, design, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, I've never seen that before, and I love it. He even crosses out thumbnails. It's like, yeah, not gonna do it. Yeah. See, this is good because, like, you when you by doing thumbnails for those of yeah, you that great didn't, presentation. I'll say that, yeah. Right, and I know some of you didn't do your thumbnails. He finds out what ideas are not working, and by doing that, you eventually find out what what is working better. So, do your thumbnails if you haven't. We will know. Or will we? <laughs> this is cool. You got th this is good. The, the the space like it it you know you, you depicted a two D plane as very kind of three dimensional. Like I I'm in the shot and I like that. Yeah, you could see the selling point very clearly. That is the whole skeleton yeah thing here. So it's that's really professionally done in terms of um having a a very strong idea. Yeah, I think anything I say at you know at this point at least regarding your finish here is just, just nitpicking. So. Just keep that in mind. You, I mean, he has. Yeah. This is what we're talking about when we say make your forms read clear. I know that this is a light side. And this is a shadow side. And, you know, so this is one basically, and then that's three, and we got that mid range value here. That's the roof picking up the sky color. Very good. Yeah. And then if you this, do want, it, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I'm running my mouth. You can right. say what you were gonna say. <laughs> All right. Um, well, if if I were to add anything to it, I would say just reference mountains more for the back, mm -hmm. just because um, everything else is so unique and looks like you referenced it well. But um, the mountains are very you know plain. I'd say just do yeah. that and then you know make it nice. And uh, be mind mindful of your your brushwork. Um, you know, with the the uh, the sky color wise, it's nice, but it's just it's brushed very kind of heavily and, and evenly you might just want to simplify a lot of that or use a photo outright and soften it and simplify it with a paint over but awesome job yeah yeah all right derek you're starting us off on the next one I what keep, yeah <laughs> i keep running my mouth all right uh pj sarek here let's see what you got all right derek what's he packing 
Well, first of all, I like the color range of it, especially the the background. Yeah, very good color range. It feels a very good mood. Like it feels like it's the end of the world, like a place that would probably need a rebel base. Mm. I would say just have something to distinguish it. I know that it is supposed to be, you know, super hidden, but maybe have an entryway that they go in, or a, you know, a flag or some sort of more of a marking that could lead to it, or uh, even just footprints to show that it's in use. Or that's a really good idea. Something like that. I, I, the light I, is nice, so like the light hitting. Yeah, I like that. It makes it read really clear. But that that's exactly what it needs is some indication that this is like being used and this is not super, some super ancient ruins. You know, maybe tracks, parked speeder bikes on the outside. Um, you know, banners, yeah. of course. Maybe satellite dishes. That's always a safe way to do it. Half the game is hinting at stuff. Like you could even hint at like armies by. Um, you have all the troops wear a certain color, and then you have the leader just have a flat, or like you know, have all the mm -hmm. troops carry a bunch of flags the same color. Then the leader wears that color, and that kind of stuff. And, yeah. yeah, this is plenty of ways to hint around. You, I mean, you really rendered out rocks really well. <laughs> yeah. that, that, it, the, the the like foreground rock there that is that is that boss. is a sexy rock. It's a boss rock, I, and yeah. you integrated the you did the snow right, right? You made all the drifts kind of go up in into the cracks and stuff, which is a lot of people tend to overlook that. And you even have perspective and scale with the snow, which I like to see as well. Yeah, I just, I just noticed that. <laughs> There's like close and far snow. That's yeah, funny. nobody yeah. does close and far snow, so you leveled up. <laughs> A really good idea, though. I like this, and it's well articulated. So maybe just add, you know, this is your basic blocked out shape. Then go ahead, just do a second pass of all the secondary details on everything. Awesome job. Yeah. Oh. Kevin's bringing a new Rebel base. I'm excited to see this one. This looks cool. We can blow it up nice. That's one hell of a render. <laughs> yeah, this one's like actually decent resolution. This is only blown up 200%. <laughs> So this is awesome. This yeah, is that's, that's... this actually has all the elements we just recommended for, uh, for the last one to bring in. A couple figures, a couple boats in place, you know, makeshift things. It's being built or reused, repurposed. It's got that vibe to it. And I, that, that kind of really kind of gloomy type of atmosphere sells a lot of it too. Um, what yeah, would, I agree with that. Yeah, what would you suggest on anything to make this, you know, just a stronger image in general? Oh. First of all, I'll say I do. I love the the L composition with it, and that it's it's really well painted and rendered. I'd say just make it more of a rebel base, I guess. Yeah, like something to give a, give and, a hint, you know, design wise, um, that it is a rebel base and not yeah. just some kind of like chateau in the in the swamp. And, uh, and uh, I guess uh, just a small nitpick is the flag that was copied in, like, um, it's like the same. Uh, make, same. make sure that the flags are going, like, like, like try and just mm -hmm. have it. the uh, flags seem like they're flowing at the same rate. Because I could tell that it was uh, copy and pasted, like, oh, between the, the two wind, of them. Oh, the wind, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the saying. flags. Just to, just to unify them, because they're, like, because they're the strong red, they are the first, one of the first things people will look at. Yeah, so, it, yeah, there's no consistency yeah. with the wind direction. That's what you're That's saying. That's about it. I love that it's being built and stuff. That's a cool story. Yeah, man. I think just you could increase the contrast with this since you could have like some off screen light kind of really coming in to illuminate that. So that's why I was just quickly kind of selecting that. And you could just go to the levels, you know, picking what you want and, you know, just upping the, the contrast and, you know, the intensity of things, you know, just a bit. And maybe you add some, oh, yeah. you know, warmth to there, it. Yeah. See, like that's that, that really makes food. it pop. That's what you need. That's what I would do anyway, you know, just from my personal experience. I'd, yeah. I kind of go like this, and yeah. Like, yeah, that is light, that is all in shadows, super clear, and it reads, and then you could add, you know, I have like 10 more seconds on this. If, yeah, and if, if you're my, too afraid to have it all strong in all areas, you could just put the levels as an adjustment layer and erase the yep. lay at it. Kind of like what I'm doing here, and then have like a little bit of that, that slip, that... That's it's really popular as you've probably seen in yeah. constant. Oh, you're today. making it juicy, <laughs> right? Ha have that sliver of light kind of coming in, and just let, you know illuminating the water there. I just erase, you know, erase this out where we don't need it. It's just kind of coming in through the, you know, around the corner there, and you could help sell the space with it. But this is an awesome idea and really good job. So, yeah, in terms of painting, that's probably my favorite in terms of, like, mm -hmm. yeah, render and finish quality. It's definitely one of the best uh, render uh, rendered ones out there. All right, we have Daniel. You're up, sir. Daniel enters a lot of these. I like, and he finished this. You finished this, Daniel, like within a week, I think, after we did the contest, we decided it. So hats off to you. You were you were literally just sitting on this for like the last month. 
All right, so we got some bridge with this, like, these, oh, disguised radio tower is a tree. They actually do this. I've seen it on the side of the highway. Really? That's <laughs> cool. I just learned something today. <laughs> they, yeah, they do that. I was like, oh, that's not a radio tower. It's, like, actually really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I like the thought process here and that you actually you have some animated uh, sort of um, concepts. Like yes. you show how, how stuff yeah, we works. know how the bridge is working. We you know, you thought this all through. You have even some of the most smallest pops uh, props. I mean you didn't do the characters really, but we know what the, the characters are equipped with, which is always good. This tunnel for me is a little on the dark side. I lose just a little bit too much information there, but you know, this is a great use of texture. We know it's obviously a railway, so lots of things are successful, you know, even so. I'm assuming this is during like World War II or something. Yeah, or that's the exact same period. vibe you know we're getting from this car here. Oh, you do have the characters. Okay, so I correct myself on that. But each piece here has got a really kind of nice little mood to it, and I do like that a lot. What What is your favorite one on this? On that one, um, probably like the detail of the interior shot. He's got these are like really the well top, detailed. Uh, one here, yeah. Like, look at that. The you're cave, like, though, like, I mean, like, the tunnel is a really good mood to it. I, mean, it's not, I really not like much the tunnel. Not much to it, but it's a nice sell. You got vehicles, you got characters, you got several interior shots. Like, you must have had a couple busy days, dude. Oh, and you even got, like, all this character stuff with logos and emblems. Oh, I really like this, dude, man. I Like, presentation-wise, this is, like, top form, I must say. Yeah, very nice. You build and you know, the paint going off the edges is actually kind of a nice presentation. Reminds yeah. me of like a Japanese art book sort of thing going there. I love that. <laughs> oh, look at this. Like you just thought everything through. I mean, I love. I I'd love to have a higher resolution of this so I could really get in there and figure out. What, uh, you know, you know, Simon here, whatever his name is. I can't even. And Major Chandler. And Eva, like I want to get in and really know these characters. You should do like a whole portfolio on this idea because I think that would work out well for you. You could split this off as like a page. Agree. That could be a page, and then just keep fleshing ideas out. Uh, I really, I mean, that's the only only place I think for you to go, really, because everything's so really professionally presented. What do you th do? You think? Would you agree? Disagree? Yeah, it's a great presentation. I love it. <laughs> I'm I'm sold on good presentation. I'm a sucker for it. All right, here we got another one from um, K. Fulmer. Yeah, we got some rebels. Definitely an illustrated approach, which is, which is certainly okay and respectable. This is really good use of color. Definitely one of the strongest uses of color we have out of the whole lot of them. What do you think, Derek? Um, what I really like is um, using shadows there, like at the foreground, middle right, like right, bottom right there. That's always an awesome storytelling thing to show that there's more people yeah, on the screen. Yeah, Same add, way add a like, camera yeah. storytelling yeah. right here. What I would change though is maybe have the table fit more into frame. It's you almost have a tangent there at the bottom of the yeah it, it leg it's there. Spatially, it is that, a little awkward. Even yeah. like perspective wise, maybe that'd be like a little bit lower. I do love the idea though, and the characters um, have you know like all their heads are directed and you mm -hmm. know well thought out way, and the they're you know they're doing rebel based things. They're actually planning. Somebody's prepping the ship in the back there. I'd say just add more bits of detail and maybe. Uh, Make the composition, uh, you know, yeah, my, stick in the center more. My advice or is stick to, it, you know, stick it. Derek mentioned this earlier with the other one that was kind of very illustrated. It um, is like the color temperature. Like we want to clearly delineate like what is inside and what is outside, and you can just do that by temperature, or um, you know, just the flavor in terms of how it's all presented. So if I just let me see if I can uh, layer duplicate this layer try to illustrate my point uh, and then select the inverse right uh, how do I do that image it, oh select inverse there we go and then just go to uh, levels again like if we can kind of really make this look like it's inside the cave right this is all yeah right that, that now by comparison this all looks way too bright yeah if you're ever if you have really close enclosed space and you're trying to think of how far away stuff is just imagine yourself as like a mouse looking at it Mm -hmm. that's, that. a good, and, um, that's, a, that's a great tip that was from uh, Craig Mullins actually that was talking about that was See, like, nice. like, we can yeah. take the whole interior cool it off a little bit and it really helps distinguish the uh, you know the outside from the inside and then if you wanted to add some of that atmosphere if it's really close to this opening right you could just 
you could erase a little bit of it, have it bleed yeah. in. And if she's if she's a leader, you could use that to play up a you know some uh, edge lighting on her and mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And, and uh, I, I, you have these have this like be a red or a green light, right? And then really you could play that up, kind of illuminating uh, all this. So if that's our core color, right? We just and you know you, you started. Uh, oh, I had and uh, yeah, don't don't forget to exploit easy storytelling elements like maybe add a chord connecting to the table yes plug that table backpack. in that's that's really easy to do and it always adds a nice uh read to it yeah and like that light would be really good if it were um i think it would be like green or just something else and well these Some, are supposed to be okay. shadows and then you could have that green light basically um you know catching the sides of like you know all these forms this is yeah. like really and hard then to the do sunlight with... could give a rim light to her and you know just kind of yeah pop it out and really can kind of think and, and what when you get into this mindset you really kind of start designing almost with light and it gets really kind of cool yeah you can see already there's a already a lot stronger mood just from like t tyler just like painting the canvas for like three seconds there's a huge mood improvement yeah and then you could like use all the cool uh, brush modes up here like this to make this really feel like it's glowing and get in there and emphasize that feature you know on you know illuminate well that's a terrible Color choice, you mean, but you light up the fronts of all their faces and you know the surfaces from everything that's super direct to it. Like this could be like really yeah. kind of jazz it up. You know, you want to. <laughs> it's all of a. We went definitely went long, but yeah, you know, hopefully a lot of people. Things. I think a lot of people could learn what we kind of showed on that one. So that makes oh, yeah. it okay this time. So I'm sorry if every anyone feels that we weren't treated them fairly. All right, Rebel Eight from John. I like this kind of lightheartedness approach to it. What do you think? Th yeah, it's uh, it's almost like <laughs> like a clubhouse, and then like kind of like like the, the kids put up like a rebel flag. Yeah, <laughs> and he's gonna go steal their toys. Um, unless this is a creature, though, really practice um proportions. He's yeah, got, he's got a long that's like an adult arm, like an adult arm, but like like almost like a toddler sized body. So yeah, just if unless it's like some kind of gnome or some weird creature, which it, I'm not getting any indication otherwise, just kind of work on the drawing aspect of it. You, and you, I'd say, yeah. What were you gonna say? Sorry. I'd say maybe add a window to the left of the there that's maybe either you know walled up or they put something in front of it or mm -hmm. you know they're looking at him for story elements. Yeah, you, know. you could put shadows. You could in even there, right? yeah. yeah. You'd have it seem like they like if it's kids that are in there that they really you know haphazardly put it up or blocked it off, covering or... their eyes and they're like you know, peeking through like yeah like blinds yeah there we go that's keep, perfect you know, keep going that's, with your storytelling there yeah <laughs> <laughs> really cool stuff you're on a roll with this uh, paint over thing here <laughs> and yeah and definitely make clear whether or not this is a tree house or not because if we're talking about design wise i'm still a little unsure of that these trees look small so that's the vibe i'm getting but um consistency with perspective of course is a must and um maybe like if this is a tree house yeah. which i'm gonna bet it is you know, make that clear. Put that down. This is like again a tangent too close to the edge. Uh, just worth noting. And then you know, put your ladder. Put your ladder in there. Going up. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And then yeah, like you could also put, make yeah. an indication or like a hole maybe like in the bag and maybe what was in the bag. Something maybe like trickled out. Just to continue pushing your narrative that you've already established. <laughs> So yeah, and for I, anatomy, just make sure you reference more. Like, yeah. uh, if you um, if you're not at the level where you could draw from your head yet, just maybe you know, um, either you get a three D program and look a, a top down at a character model, or try and get a photo of somebody like that, or you know, something like. Yeah, cheat and use Daz three D like I do. It saves it my does. ass, especially with perspectives like this. Just cheat. <laughs> They all, they all, all the old masters did that anyway. Just... Yeah, they did. They definitely did. Alien invasion. Okay, we got sixties, seventies. Oh, we got a lot of information from this. Thank you. You got a logo. You got your little. This is cool. Yeah. I like this. I'm feeling this, Derek. Feeling this. I have a deep this. this is my favorite here. bit right here. This entrance. Yeah, nice. It's one of the most lowest resolution things I've ever seen, but I'm so oh, I really it's like so it. So well. All right. It's got a lot of character to it it's not just uh it's not like it's built for rebel base it was literally made into a rebel base yes so 
if you have time, make this into a full fledged piece. Yeah. And that's post that's it back in the group because I want to see it. Like these are awesome. That'd be a portfolio piece. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And these these are pretty good too. Did this is a little this is like a little fish eye. Like yeah. bring your um something like this. You probably want to bring your your two vanishing points way out uh, out of canvas. Yeah, like, and if you want a good. trick for you. Yeah, you have a trick? If you want a trick for a lights in that on the sleeping quarters one, just have it so when the light's shining, you could just make everything behind that a lot brighter. Like, you just create a, you know, a fog of atmosphere to push it back. You'll find that in all movies and games and stuff. One fog of atmosphere coming up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I mean? like, if it's light, like, you know, the light just hits all the particles. Go to, yeah. We'll go to lighten like that. Yeah, and then, and then then drop the fill, not the yeah, there opacity, you go. Yeah. but the fill, like that. And then which adds tons of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now look how badass this is. This is oh pretty yeah, badass oh yeah, that's this juice there. Mm. There we go. Yeah, that looks really cool. I like this. I mean, you got characters. You got it connects the the two parts to it together. I thought that I wasn't sure if it's two pictures or one there. Yeah, yeah and, it, and again, and again that falls. I I think that's a result from the the, the vanishing points being too close. Yeah. But yeah, do those top two ones as full illustrations and they'll be portfolio pieces. Really? They they're awesome. Really cool design in there. Like I wish I thought of that. Really, he, like it's <laughs> yeah, the shapes. It's so it all cool. comes down to the shapes. He's got awesome yeah, use of shapes yeah. in there. Like if you could read it as a thumbnail, it'll read as a final picture. All right, Ari. Right. Oh, what do we got here? This is cool. Making sure Yep, that's it. All right. All right. It's, def it's definitely a rebel base. That is, yeah. This is, this is cool. I like this. I like Seems the lights at the front there, like the, the ones on the pillar or the, the front this, side things. Yeah. He has a lot of those those secondary details that a lot of other entries kind of glossed over, and that that's probably not just because I'm gonna guess you used three D. I'm not gonna say you did or didn't, but I'm guess you did. But, you know, that blocked out your form, but you still went in over the 3D to give it all the sense of personality that we're, we want to look for in something like this. So, awesome job. Yeah, um, definitely. If anything, I'd probably just add something in the very, like, le left or, you know, further back to make it seem like it's pushing back further. Although I'm assuming a lot of this is underground. But mm -hmm. it's a, it seems like a pretty small structure, but if it goes underground or if it's meant to be just, a like, a small barracks thing, then, yeah. That's a, right I'm going to try to do... A very quick adjustment on this to see if we could do to um, actually increase some of this re or drama. I just want to kind of increase that drama a bit. So just kind of lower yeah. um, that, and then like, never you know, underestimate lighting. Lighting is a paintbrush. You know, it's it's just as, as important as everything else. Yeah. So let me just turn off this uh, transfer mode. Yeah, you want to add like even though it's kind of like a kind of a clear day, you may want to consider at least trying the option of just adding some of that light drama to it like putting this half you know in shadow and then maybe have like the corner of it um like up over here or something peek out like it like having like what we did with the, the rebel room table right in the cave have like some things out, off off screen casting like kind of shadows on this so we can you know maybe it's one of these walls maybe it's another building but you know, kind of do that and you can really begin to like add you know the you know atmosphere to it so i guess this would be a bit darker right and then yeah it just i'm just thinking of values like everything out here is be light this can be kind of gray and then all this can be just like a, a black value but you know overall it's a really good job and it obviously great job on the storytelling in that one in terms of all the little mm -hmm. details like the yeah it has a very professional finish to it too which is always yeah, good that's... so great job Ari. or Ari, i'm not sure all right, what what are we left with these two? I believe so. Yeah. Here we go. The crossroads. From John, welcome back, John. Always Very... awesome to see you. Right? You have a full band of like rebels and like oh wow, several shots. You worked your the, ass this off. This looks month. like a month of work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I I like the yeah the colors and mood. They're very professional. It's uh. Very yeah. professional, John. You're getting there. This is like this is so there actually. This is very awesome. A little more light and atmosphere. You could you know introduce subtle a little subtle more uh, color kind of variety to this, but 
Uh, one little trick, of course, for doing that, just because a lot of your scenes are dark, um, just copy and paste this. Um, try running a, uh, what is it, a posterized filter on it. And oh, yeah, the comic book thing, yeah. Yeah, it adds, this is extremely subtle, but you can you can see when it does that, at least to give you an indication of color. You can get in there and add like some greens, some magentas, some cyans, and you know, so you can color pick it and then always just go back, you know, to kind of like your core layer here and add them. To, so it's just not, not quite as monochromatic. Uh, Nathan Fox does stuff very similar to that and he, get, he layers it all and it adds like a lot of little color jitter to his uh, scene. Yeah, and he does the whole was active versus passive thing. Yes. yes, and my biggest issue with any of these is just overall they're just like a little too dark. Um, do you have any tips or suggestions for them? Uh, yeah, just change camera angles for um, some of them because I noticed a lot of them have the same um, um, the same sort of rule of thirds, kind of in the exact same area, same uh, view. Oh, you're right. I have the, the same problem too that I put a lot of my stuff at at the same angle but it's sometimes it's good just to have one from you know from the top looking down yeah, or we, we all do that John. Up. yeah because we all have love our we all have our certain camera angles that we love i always end up doing the same thing so yeah very sort of, very right heavy so, <laughs> yeah so yeah if you could do, take this level of like thought and, and clarity with your ideas do some from like a, a looking down like if you're on a balcony or maybe like a spy on a statue looking down at something you know this type for like these establishing shots are obviously very good but even in here you could have brought you know bring this in and really kind of tighten it up add like that thing and the crystal like above it get in there with the drama of it all you know do a close-up do some close-ups some far aways some up angles some down angles so just you know think of that you know moving on in the future because that's that'd be like a really great place for you to go and explore these ideas yeah, definitely. Totally agree. All right. Last but not least, the Rebel Base from Alyssa. This is awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Like the story, Ooh. like the whole. Um, this is like really stuff. cool. I like the generator in the back. That's a that's a sweet selling point there. It's that a, is. There's a lot of detail here. You worked your ass off at this. Yeah, I'd say if anything, just um, blend stuff in more, make it seem like it's more like the same scene. Although you could get away with um, this level of stuff getting, you know, connecting together for concept art. Yeah, I think again, just um, selectively placing where to put some contrast will be your best. Um, yeah. Best uh, plan of attack because like this is like my favorite part right here where the lights coming in and it's illuminating that. But like you know, in this case, play it up. Um, always kind of play it up a bit. So if I take this and just, I'm going to go to levels because that's what I do this episode. I'm just going to darken everything on the inside. Um, and bring in, bring it down just a bit. And then of course I'll hide that all. But, you know, just like, just indicate to make this light is clearly coming in here, right? On the ground. Yeah. And darken up the foreground of the guy there, yeah. Okay. Don't even, we don't even need those to be that oh, light. Oh, wow, that's a good mood there at that shadow, yeah. Have that shadow <laughs> coming in. This is all, that, that light on the map is really good. How it's, come you're not an art director yet? <laughs> someday. I applied for an art directing, quasi art directing job today, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> like, and, and then like, oh, all this good. can be really dark. You just want to group your values. That's what this is all coming down to, is like, this is all yeah. be dark. This is light, this is light, this will all be dark. Because everything, as this is, is like light versus dark, light versus dark, light versus dark. But it's all also the, um, very color-wise the same way, too. So you can get yeah. away with that color, but you have to group your values really kind of selectively. So, you know, isolating right. that out there. And then maybe just taking this. You can have things light or dark back here, but just take this area, right? And just, uh, you know, tone down the uh, contrast of this a bit. So go to image adjustment levels. Uh, you know, just just to remove, in some form or another, just the contrast. Oh, that that probably made it worse. Yeah, something like that. And then brighten it back up. Yeah, just play with things until like, see, that's yeah. clearly in the background now, and it has all the detail. But it's helping. It's helping it definitely read. Uh, yeah, by going dark light, dark light, you'll see that in tons of professional concert art. If you look around, no matter what interior, exterior, they'll always layer it. <laughs> see, like. This is like a nice little touch up here, but 
This is like taking way too much attention. We don't need that. Just knock it all down. Much better. Yeah, yeah. It's just distracting. You have to prioritize what you want to show in the image. So you have it all laid out. You have your ideas. So keep this in mind, everybody, not just uh, Alyssa. So everyone kind of stuck around and watch this. Like, like, you know, I want this area to be the most important. This will be two, and then back here will be three. So we have a one, two, three. And then you can prioritize. Awesome. This is highest yeah. detail, right? Second detail, and the least amount of detail. Yeah, never worry about detailing everything. If they need a call out, they'll do it separately. They'll be like, yeah. all right, take this and render it out on the and side. <laughs> actually, maybe even like just keeping this guy in, in silhouette and simplifying him. You know, you just add that shadow to his face and just keep basically him. Yeah. Him in shadow. So we don't need to see a lot of... He casts a shadow on the map. There we go. And, That's and, nice. And then, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you made this look professional. Yeah, it, well, it's there. It's like, right? It's 90% there. Yeah. It's just like, just it's a balance. Yeah. It's a, a balance of value structure, which is what I've been learning too because... That's just like what been one of the hardest things for me to kind of grasp and then kind of go over like this way, right? And this, and we'll just... Oh, I know that feeling. Like, uh, when you when it clicks in your head, though, that you're like... It's like, yeah, you, you yeah, make... Ah, ah, what, what, was I, what was I doing, yo? <laughs> you, you, you just, it's, it's something you just got to make that that con conscious uh, effort uh, towards. So I'm just going to take... I'm going to... I don't know what's going to happen here, but just like, you know, get a little of that light in here light this up and just you know it pushes oh, everything yeah. in the foreground and then it's it's all about the read the quick easy read and getting away with hiding as much detail as you can but um overall very impressive and i like this piece a lot so derek what's your favorite pieces here for, or you know piece from from this month well you turned that one into my favorite piece after the yeah. painting <laughs> um i <laughs> Um, I like the uh, castle one in terms of rendering and the ideas. I love the uh, the the one of the mech and all yes. that, and also the, the desert ones ideas. And also uh, later on, I'm sorry, there's so many of them. After is the the whole hidden base on the side of the whatever the ship thing. Yeah. Derek likes them all. There's your answer. <laughs> yeah. All of them are his favorites. <laughs> I like stuff that isn't usually normal. I guess like stuff that you know you don't see every day on Art Station stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I like I like. Uh, Daniels for how well it's well uh, articulated and presented. It's very much on par with with um, Frederick's here. Um, I love the detail that you know you have here, Melissa. And I don't know, idea wise, I really like these Wyvern Rider deserters. I don't know that I didn't think of that till right now. But I'm like looking at that and it's like nostalgia is getting me, dude. It's just you f they found my sweet spot. So yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite idea. <laughs> And we'll kind of go with that. So thanks to everybody for participating. And uh, check back shortly on, on the, the event page to see when the, the next challenge is and what it's due. But uh, awesome work, everyone. Uh, this was certainly a pleasure to do. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was thank you, Derek, for helping me out with this. Oh, thank you for having me uh, here again. These are, these are awesome to see. Great yeah. work, guys. Awesome work, everyone. Take care.